Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to my press conference this afternoon. Two weeks ago, I told you I was planning a cabinet reshuffle, and today I'm announcing the new lineup. It will be a more extensive reshuffle than is usual this early in the term of government, and I have two reasons for this. One is that the Minister for Finance is changing. Following Budget 2021, Minister DPM Heng is relinquishing the finance portfolio. Finance is a key ministry, so when the finance minister changes, there are many repercussions for the other appointments. Secondly, I'm also moving the ministers for health, for manpower, and for trade and industry. These are the frontline ministries dealing with COVID-19 and its consequences. I considered making these changes after the general election last year, but then we were still in the thick of COVID-19, and so I decided that we needed to let the ministers concentrate on fighting COVID-19 at that point. Now that the COVID-19 situation is more stable, although by no means over, I'm able now to make the changes. And with these major moves, there are inevitably other consequential adjustments to the appointments. I'm therefore taking this opportunity to redeploy some of the other ministers to give them fresh responsibilities and gain different exposure and experience. Let me now run through some of the details. As I announced two weeks ago, Heng Sui Kiat will continue as Deputy Prime Minister and Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies. He will also continue to oversee the strategy group within the Prime Minister's office, which coordinates our policies and plans across the government, as well as the National Research Foundation, NRF. As Finance Minister, Sui Kiat has carried a heavy burden, especially during COVID-19, when he delivered multiple budgets within the year. Relinquishing finance will free him to concentrate more on the whole of government economic agenda, including chairing the Future Economy Council and incorporating the recommendations of the emerging Stronger Task Force into the work of the Council. He will also continue to co-chair the JCBC, the Joint Council for Bilateral Cooperation, together with PRC Vice Premier Han Zheng. Lawrence Wong will take over as Minister for Finance. Lawrence has been assisting Sui Kiat as Second Minister since 2016, so he has the experience and is a natural fit for the job. The MOF team is otherwise unchanged. Minister Indrani Raja will support Lawrence as Second Minister. And on COVID-19, Lawrence will continue to co-chair the MTF, the Multi-Ministry Task Force. Chan Chun Singh will move to the Ministry of Education. Chun Singh has done an excellent job getting our economy back on track and preparing our industries and companies to respond to structural changes in the global economy. This has been a major national priority. Now I'm sending him to education, where he will build on the work of previous education ministers to improve our education system, to bring out the best in every child and student and to develop young Singaporeans for the future. Nurturing people is quite different from growing the economy or mobilizing unions. And I look forward to Chun Singh taking on this fresh responsibility and broadening his experience. Gan Kim Yong will take over as Minister for Trade and Industry. Kim Yong has been Health Minister for almost a decade. In fact, well, almost a decade. He has been a point man in the fight against COVID-19, co-chairing the multi-ministry task force. At Ministry of Health, he implemented many major healthcare reforms and leaves a significant legacy of enhancements and improvements to the healthcare system. Right now, MTI, where he is going, is a key ministry. In MTI, Kim Yong will oversee our economic recovery from COVID-19 and pursue new opportunities to grow our economy. He is well suited to this role because he was previously Minister for Manpower and he also served in MTI, in fact with me, very early in his career before he spent 16 years in the private sector. 
Ong Yi Kang will take over as Minister for Health. He has been dealing with major challenges in transport since he took over transport from Corbun Wan. He continued Bun Wan's improvements to the public transport system. Since COVID-19, Yi Kang has been working on reopening our borders and protecting our status as an air and sea hub. At the Ministry of Health, he will build on the strong foundation laid by Kim Yong in healthcare and deal with issues like ageing, healthcare infrastructure and healthcare finance. These need our unremitting efforts spanning multiple health ministers. Yi Kang will co-chair the Ministerial Task Force on COVID-19 together with Lawrence Wong. Iswaran will take over as Minister for Transport. At MCI, he has significantly improved government's public communications and sense-making capabilities and helped us understand and respond to citizens' views and concerns. He's managed major upgrades to our infrastructure, for example, the award of the 5G tenders and the rollout for the new 5G networks. At Transport, he'll continue improving the quality, affordability and environmental sustainability of our transport system. Another important task is to maintain our status as a global air and sea hub in the post-COVID-19 world. MOT also deals with ongoing sensitive airspace and maritime issues concerning our neighbours. Iswaran will also continue as Minister in Charge of Trade Relations in MTI. At MCI, Josephine Teo will succeed Iswaran. As Manpower Minister, Josephine was responsible for a whole range of policies, including worker safety, labour relations and retirement adequacy. Under her leadership, we achieved tripartite consensus on a 10-year roadmap to raise the re-employment age and the retirement age. We also made a major expansion of the Silver Support Scheme. Last year, in the unprecedented COVID-19 downturn, MOM led our efforts to support local job creation and training opportunities. At the same time, MOM has been on the front line dealing with the migrant worker dormitories. Through all this, Josephine has been steadfast in working to support our lower wage workers and upgrade their incomes. This project is making good progress and she will see this through even though she has gone to MCI. Josephine will continue as Second Minister for Home Affairs. Tan Si Ling will step up as Minister for Manpower. Since he was appointed Second Minister in MOM in July last year, he has been leading our efforts to tackle COVID-19 in the migrant worker dorms. Now he'll take on the full range of responsibilities in MOM. Si Ling will continue as Second Minister in MTI, this will help us connect the work of the two vital economic ministries, particularly on restructuring the economy and the workforce. The rest of the ministers and ministries are unchanged. There are some of, quite a number of the ministers also have additional responsibilities. Most are unchanged, but I'll mention two changes. Josephine Teo is taking over as minister in charge of Smart Nation from Vivian Balakrishnan and taking over as Minister in Charge of Cybersecurity from Iswaran. And Edwin Tong will take over as Deputy Chairman of the People's Association from Chan Chun Singh. Apart from the ministers, I'm also rotating some of the newer POHs. Ko po Kun will be the Senior Minister of State at the Ministry of Manpower in addition to his appointment in health. Po Kun has been seconded to NTUC as Deputy Secretary General since 2018. I have asked the NTUC Central Committee to let Pokun come back to the government, which they have agreed. And it's very good for the labour movement to have someone familiar at MOM, especially one who has been working on worker training. So that's why I'm sending Pokun to MOM. After discussing with Secretary General Ng Chi Ming, I'm sending Chi Hong Tat to NTUC to replace Pokun. 
Hong Tat will relinquish his appointment in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but he will remain in the Ministry of Transport. At MFA, Hong Tat will be replaced by SMS Sim An, who will in turn relinquish her portfolio at MCI. And Minister of State Tan Kiat Hao will replace Sim An in MCI, while remaining in MND, his other appointment. Finally, Parliamentary Secretary Rahayu Mazam will take on an additional appointment in MCI. All these new appointments take effect on the 15th of May, after the next parliamentary sitting. Most of the 4G ministers have already accumulated experience in a wide range of portfolios. This round of cabinet changes will allow them to gain new experience and exposure. They've got to get to work quickly, because although COVID-19 is stabler now, we are still in the midst of a public health and economic crisis. The reshuffle is also an opportunity for them to work together in new capacities so that they can understand each other better and strengthen their cohesion as a team. This will make the new team readier to take over from me and my older colleagues. And I ask Singaporeans to give me and my cabinet team their full support. Now let me say a few words in Mandarin before I take questions. Tajasiao 都需要财政部的协调，因此财政部换人时，肯定会牵涉到不少其他部门的人选。第二，去年的官兵疫情影响了我大选之后的布阵。大选后，我本想调动贸工部、卫生部和人力部的部长，但因为当时疫情严峻
redeployments. And secondly, because I had wanted to adjust the appointments in MTI, MOH and MOM after the elections, but held off until now. So the appointments which I made immediately after the elections, in a sense, were an interim set of changes, and now I'm making the full set of changes. And some of the interim changes led up to here, and therefore the ministers were appointed remain, for example, MND. But unfortunately, some of the other interim changes uh, had to make adjustments to the situation then and have to be refitted to the new longer-term configuration now. And therefore, I have had to move two ministers who have only been in their appointments quite a short time, um, which is uh, Lawrence in MOE and Ong Yi Kang in MOT. Uh, but unfortunately, it can't be helped. I think it's a bit uh, disruptive for the ministries. Uh, they've, they, have made, they have made contributions. They, have, they are getting into their stride. And now I have to disrupt them. But I hope that after this adjustment, the new ministers in those two posts will be able to settle down for some time. Thank you, PM. Um, next, uh, I see Waiman Zaobao. Waiman, please. Yes, Waiman. Waiman. Hi, Dr. Chairman. Uh, I'm following up actually on uh, S.D. Zakir's question, uh, especially seeing some of the 4G ministers, for example, Minister Lawrence Wong and Minister Ong Kang, leaving ministries that they have recently taken over. Um, would, were, you, were you concerned that these moves might be disruptive and could send mixed signals? For example, I think right after the general election, you spoke about how the transport ministry requires a minister with political nows, given that there are a lot of bilateral engagements. So I think many are watching Minister Ong Yi Kang's move to MOH. So why the decision? And can you share also about the consequential changes to having both Minister Ong Yi Kang and Minister Lawrence Wong being co-chair of the COVID-19 MTF? Thank you. Well, I, I appoint my ministers where they can best make a contribution. And in July, when we last made the appointments, I knew that there were major slots to be filled, especially in MOH, where uh, Kim Yong had been minister for some time, but I was not ready to move Kim Yong, and I was able to put Yi Kang into MOT, and I think in uh, less than a year in MOT, he has made an impact there. I'm now following through to put Yi Kang into MOH, and because he is in MOH, and he will be handling COVID on the front line, looking after the MOH part of it, I'm putting him to co-chair together with Lawrence Wong. Lawrence was co-chair not on the basis of his appointment previous or uh, of his previous appointments, but on the basis personal to him. And so Lawrence continues to co-chair. But Gan Kim Yong, having come out from MOH, I think it's best that the MOH minister sits there together with uh, Lawrence Wong on the MTF. Thank you. Uh, let's see, maybe someone from Media Corp. Uh, si Hui, perhaps? Thank you. Hi, this is Si Hui from CNA. Hi. Uh, this is a continuation from earlier questions as well. You know, some may be concerned at the disruption in Singapore's fight against the pandemic, you know, especially amid new infections at Westlight Dormitory. Um, with the two MTF co-chairs changing their portfolios, you know, what's your response? I understand Ong Yi Kang will be replacing Well, only one of the co-chairs has changed. Lawrence Wong remains on the MTF as co-chair. Uh, Yi Kang replaces Kim Yong as co-chair. But uh, if you are talking about the dormitories, the front line handling them is MOM and Tan Si Ling particularly, who has been specifically assigned the dorm's responsibility. And Tan Si Ling will now become Minister for Manpower and it remains his responsibility. So I don't think that we will have a the, this, this change of appointments will impact the specific Westlight dorm situation. Not, I mean, it will mean different people in charge of our overall COVID response, uh, but that is something which I think we can take in our stride. I should also say that um, the appointment changes take effect on the 15th of May, which is three weeks from now. And during the next three weeks, I'm quite sure that we will be doing a lot 
in Westlight uh, Woodlands as well as the other dorms. Thank you, PM. Um, okay, Kwok Wai, thank you for holding. Hello, good afternoon, PM. Uh, my question will Good afternoon, Kwok sorry, you're from where? Kwok Wai, from Channel 8, Kwok Wai. Yeah, hi. Channel 8. Uh, so, PM, for this uh, reshuffle, uh, what does the new cabinet mean for our economy in terms of giving our investors more confidence? How will this give our investors some form of confidence with this change? Thank you. Well, I think, I hope the investors will see that we have changed from one MTI minister who has uh, been competently ma discharging his responsibilities to another MTI minister who has ample experience and whom we have every reason to expect will discharge his responsibilities equally well. Um, Chun Singh didn't come to MTI with a lot of um, economic management experience, but he came bring, applying his mind, having spent time in the unions, which is very valuable. And before that, he was in uh, MSF. But in MTI, he mastered the job, and I think over the last year plus especially, MTI has been rolling out schemes not just to deal with the cr crisis and the downturn, but to enable companies to upgrade and to prepare for the future. And Kim Yong comes to MTI, having previously been mom minister, having previously served in MTI as a junior civil servant when I was MTI minister back in 80. Eight, I think. And in between, he had spent more than a decade, 16 years in the private sector, which I think is valuable experience for anybody who becomes MTI minister. So I am sure that the investors will look at this and will, I mean, if they don't know Kim Yong by now from the MTF, uh, if they read his CV, I have no reason to doubt that they will maintain full confidence in Singapore. Thank you, PM. Uh, Martino, Mothership. Hi, good afternoon, PM. Good I'm Martino, afternoon. Mothership. Hi, Martino. Hello. Hi, PM. Um, in, in terms of uh, leadership renewal, I noticed that uh, there are no changes among um, the 4G ministers, maybe uh, among the 3G ministers. Maybe you can share with us your thinking behind this. What, uh, do, you, what do you mean by changes? Movements? Movements, yeah, except uh, Minister Gunn. Well, I, the ministers who needed to be moved have been moved, and the numbers are not small. As you know, there are seven ministers who are being posted or promoted, and I think that um, for the rest, I looked at it, and I decided that we needed to continue with them where they were for now. It was not, just a, it was not a matter of moving three, 4G and keeping 3G stationary. It's a matter of who, who I need to fill which slot most urgently? Thank you, PM. Um, Thank you, PM. Hadi from Berita Harian. Hi, PM. Hadi Hi. from Berita Harian here. Yes. I just want to know your expectations, uh, particularly with the new partnership of um, the two ministers uh, co chairing the MPDF task force. I expect all of them to work closely together and cooperate to make sure that the, minist the, the policies are well coordinated and nothing slips through the cracks. And that's how the team has to work. And whoever, and that, that's how the whole cabinet has to work. Because people must know that you're working, doing this as part of a team and you're doing your part, but at the same time, you're covering for one another so that when a problem comes up, we deal with a problem holistically and not just each person tackling his piece and leaving gaps in between or uh, overlaps and conflicts between the different ministries. Thank you, PM. May I have permission to take two more? Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, Jinsen, today, please. IPM, this is Junsen from today. Hi. Uh, the question is whether um, it is an ideal situation with the disruption caused by this uh, reshuffle and whether it sets a healthy precedent for ministers to only spend a short time in one portfolio and then be moved to the next. And I also wanted to find out if um, 
the 4G leaders, including DPM Heng, had any uh, part to play in, in, in their input for your decisions for this reshuffle? It is not desirable to move ministers after less than a year. Sometimes it is necessary, it, and then you think very carefully, and if it can't be helped, you do it. And next time, you'll have to think very carefully again. I, I mean, you cannot say that this is a precedent, and because the last minister served a few months, the next minister likewise. Uh, as for the, how, the, how we came to this configuration, it was a result of extensive consultations. I talked to many of the ministers, including the DPM, DPM Heng, uh, before I settled the uh, moves. And, uh, this, and then I had to discuss with each of the ministers to make sure that they understood what their new mission was and what the purpose of the uh, deployments were. Uh, before settling it. That's why it has taken me two weeks rather than just um, doing it the day after my previous press conference. Thank you, PM. For the very last question, uh, Chun Hing from Wanpao. Yes, hi. Hi, good afternoon. This is Chen Hing from Wat Bao. Um, my question is, um, could you share your considerations between, behind, the appoint, behind the changes for PA and NTC, as well as you mentioned that um, the ministers are really deployed to give them fresh responsibilities, but we couldn't help notice that um, the Desmond Lee has not been given any fresh responsibilities. Sorry, Desmond Lee has not been given? Any uh, new, responsibilities. new responsibilities, yes. Well, uh, in the case of PA, uh, Chan Chun Singh has been in charge of PA for a while now, I think more than three years. And I think that in education, he's going to have his hands very full. He's also uh, covering several other additional responsibilities, including PSD, as well as uh, party work. So I felt that it was better to spread the duties out. And in this case, I have given PA into the, into the charge of Edwin Tong, who is an MCCY, and I think there's synergy between MCCY's work and PA's work. Uh, your second question was, uh, Desmond Lee not given new responsibilities. I think if you talk to Desmond Lee, he has already more responsibilities than he needs. He's not just minister in MND, but he is also second minister in MSF, and uh, doing quite intensive outreach in his MSF role. Uh, I do have many ideas what I can load Desmond with, but I have decided to uh, hold off for now. 